So now in this last video on the cell surface structure of prokaryotes, we're going to be looking at the final accessory structures that we see on the outside of these cells. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Cell Surface Structures 3. And again, this is going to be mainly devoted to some of the accessory components that are also found in some but not all prokaryotic cells. First and foremost, we have to look at the capsules and the slime layers. They go hand in hand for the most part. Um, two different things, but very similar in their function as the outside components of the cell, prokaryotic cell. So capsules and slime layers are going to be things that actually go around the cell wall. So they're the complete outside of these cells and they surround cell wall. So we'll write that down. And their composition, they're composed of polysaccharides and proteins. So we'll write that down. Composed of polysac for just polysaccharides and proteins. These two components, polysaccharide and proteins, are going to play a big role in terms of whether or not this capsule or this slime layer will be effective. Specifically, this capsule or slime layer, whatever it may be, is going to protect this bacteria against something very important that our body does to try to defeat the bacteria. And this protection for the prokaryotic bacterial cell is the following. It protects against phagocytosis. So that is essentially cell eating. Our body has immune cells that are devoted to this process entirely. They are phagocytosing cells. And these cells are out there just purveying everything that they see. If they see something weird, if they see something that's not normal, they're going to just phagocytose them. They're going to literally eat that foreign organism, that foreign microorganism. But this can be evaded or prevented if you have something like a capsule or slime layer. The details of which we don't really need to focus on, but more specifically, um, look at figure 27.4. This gives us a great visual uh, representation of the capsule and how it surrounds our cell wall. So it's the furthermost uh, structure of the cell surface structures that we've been mentioning. Now, another structure that's on the outside of these prokaryotic cells uh, are the fimbrae and pili. So these both go hand in hand again, two different things, but of similar functions. Fimbrae plus pili. So these are going to be actually shown very well on figure 27.6. So take a look at that figure as you understand the following components. Fimbrae themselves are uh, simply hair-like appendages, okay? Both of these are hair-like appendages. That means that they are the ones that are going to sort of be these extensions that come out of the cell surface of a prokaryotic cell. And their function will be very important because they're going to be a part of the bacteria's successful or lack of success in terms of whether or not it will invade a, let's say, host successfully. And in order for it to do that, it utilizes something like fimbrae, let's say. So fimbrae themselves, more specifically, are shorter and more numerous than pili. So we'll just write that down, shorter plus more numerous than pili, but both of these, the fimbrae and the pili, are used for attachment. So we'll say both used for attachment. Now this is a crucial process, attachment. Seems simple, but it's very crucial for a prokaryotic cell to be able to attach to something because remember, these are single cells, these are unicellular organisms that can't really do much on their own but if they have a source of food, if they have a source of energy, they're going to latch onto it, they're going to attach onto it, and make sure that they either infect that host or are able to at least exploit that host. And that infection process really involves strong attachment. And if you have fimbrae and pili, this really helps in your ability to attach to a host cell, let's say. Finally, last cell surface structure would be uh, endospores. Endospores aren't technically surface structures, but they are included in this part of the lecture because they are actually going to be the end result of a very complex process of turning a bacterial cell into an endospore. And an endospore is simply going to be something that's in a dormant stage. So you have a bacteria, and let's say the conditions are very harsh for this bacteria. They're not promoting life. The bacteria will make a conscious uh, decision to turn into an endospore, which will basically be 
It's stripping everything except for the bare essentials and becoming dormant. It is no longer active in this endospore stage. Look at figure 27.5 to get a good visualization of this process. When you're in this dormant stage, you're actually now because, let's say, the reason why we went to this inactive stage was because the conditions were harsh. But when you're in this endospore stage, you can actually withstand, you can uh, go through these harsh conditions because you are now stripped down to your bare essentials. It's just some DNA, maybe uh, a vesicle surrounding that DNA, and that's it. None of the fancy structures that we talked about, none of the fimbrae, capsules, slime layers, none of that. Just a very small, dormant, uh, simple, simplified bacterium. And a good example of this is anthrax. Anthrax, uh, which is the common name for the anthrax infection, uh, is a great example of the ability for a bacteria to go into a dormant stage and withstand harsh conditions for a long time. That's why anthrax can be found on, let's say, paper, and it can stay on paper for a very, very long time and then transmit itself onto a human body, let's say, if that human body comes in contact with the paper and we have a much better condition than just, say, non-living paper. So that concludes our understanding of the cell surface structures all surrounding a bacteria or prokaryotic or more generally a prokaryotic cell. And uh, we'll continue our look at this prokaryotic cell as we move forward within the lecture.